Food is medicine. To understand what that means, let's talk about how food impacts our health. What we eat literally becomes our cells. Our cell membranes are created from the fats we eat in our diet. So if you're watching your screen right now, chowing down on a fast food meal, chock full of trans fatty acids, over the next few days, those will be incorporated into your cell membranes, causing them to be more rigid and not function properly. Our bodies require vitamins and minerals as cofactors in our biochemical pathways. If we don't acquire these from our foods, the biochemical pathways also won't function properly. We've heard a lot recently about genes. We've mapped the human genome, and now we can do genetic testing and find out our risk for practically everything. But we aren't talking about something maybe even more important, epigenetics. Just because you have the gene for, say, heart disease, doesn't mean you're destined to have a heart attack. How you fuel your body can literally turn on or turn off gene expression. Food really is your medicine. Here are some general action steps you can take to treat your body well. First, limit processed foods. This is anything that comes out of a box, a bag, can, wrapper, etc. No matter what the package says, nothing is better than food in its most natural state. Avoid trans fatty acids. These are most commonly found in margarine, cooking sprays, and packaged foods. On labels, you will see trans fatty acids called hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils. The oils are hydrogenated to give the food a longer shelf life. Portion control. This is a big problem in American culture. We pride ourselves on eating contests and winning t-shirts for finishing a hamburger larger than our heads. Somewhere between all-you-can-eat buffets and supersized fast food portions, we lost the concept of a reasonable portion. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about one meal and what healthy portions look like. Look at your fist. This is a serving of protein. That means fish, poultry, meat, beans, tofu, whatever you're into. Next, put two fists together. This is a serving of vegetables for one meal. Carbohydrates, again, is just one fist. Carbohydrates include starchy vegetables like potatoes or yams, whole grains, and rice. Let's talk about fat. Fat is important in every meal because it helps with the absorption of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Plus, fat is essential for good health. A serving of fat in one meal is the size of your thumb. This could be extra virgin olive oil, some nuts or seeds, maybe some cheese, flax oil, walnut oil, whatever healthy oil sounds good to you. So there you have it, healthy portions. Give it a try for a week. Eat normally, but just take a minute before you dig in to hold your fist over your plate and think about portion control. Drinking water. I have honestly seen patients who can't tell me the last time they drank water. With so many options available for vitamin water or lean water, who would drink just plain water? I've even had people tell me, there's water in my coffee, or there's water in my soda. Well, I don't count that as water. I mean just plain water. A nice goal is your body weight in pounds divided by two turned into ounces. For example, someone who weighs 160 pounds would drink 80 ounces a day. I already spoke a little about the importance of healthy fats. Fat has been demonized for some time now. We're just leaving the low fat craze. So I like to emphasize how healthy dietary fats are and encourage people to eat organic eggs, even the yolk, avocados, extra virgin olive oil, nuts and seeds, coconuts and coconut oil, and more. I know it can be hard to eat enough vegetables in one day. If you can manage the portions I talked about earlier, then you'll meet your goals. Six fists per day of vegetables is fantastic. You want to aim for five different colors in one day. A serving of vegetables is a half a cup of vegetables or one cup of salad greens. I just love this next slide because it highlights the wonders of eating whole foods. Growing up, we heard the old adage, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. I just think it's hysterical that a research study was conducted to prove that apples are good for you. We could do these studies on all the fruits and vegetables or just believe what we already know. Eating a whole foods diet goes a long way with prevention. For almost every condition, there's a diet plan that can help. A good book for this is Dr. Alan Gabby's book titled Nutritional Medicine. 
In my classes, I go through how to eat for a variety of conditions, including blood pressure, weight loss, diabetes, bone health, and more. I like to end with Dr. Andrew Wild's anti-inflammatory diet pyramid. I love how he puts vegetables and fruits as the bulk of the diet. On here you can see fish, nuts, seeds, eggs, even herbal tea. This is a far cry from the standard food pyramid we often see. If you want more specifics on foods for conditions, attend one of my food is medicine classes. Check out the events page on my website for more information. AltSolutionsForHealth.com